Hello, everyone. Welcome to Conversations and Demonstrations with Native American Potters. I'm Andrea Fisher, and today is April 5th, 2024, and we're here in Santa Fe at Andrea Fisher Fine Pottery. We are delighted and privileged to, to have two wonderful potters here that we are going to share uh, with you for about one hour. Uh, we have Angie Yazzie and her son, Eric Marcus, and they are both from Taos Pueblo. Taos Pueblo is about an hour and a half's drive north of Santa Fe. Now, a Angie is a master micaceous pottery maker. And as you can see from the screens, that uh, we, we will be seeing many of her pieces of micaceous pottery. And Angie, would you say a, a few words about yourself? Sure. I um, am from Taos Pueblo. I am half Navajo. My father was Navajo, so that's why I have the Navajo name Yazi, but born and raised at Taos Pueblo where uh, the micaceous clay is widely used or more used than anywhere else a lot. Well, I don't know. Um, but it's found in the northern mountains up there quite a bit. So I've been working with micaceous clay since I was a little kid, about 50 years ago now. Well, um, so it's got the glittery stuff you see. Yeah, tell, tell us what micaceous pottery is. Sure. Micaceous pottery, mica, is a form, of, it's a mineral, and it's the glittery stuff you see in the clay, all the shiny, glittery stuff, and it's already in the clay when we go harvest in the local hills, and we usually do that in around April for it's, when it's soft, so well, we're the, not adding it, anything to it. Is, is the mica tiny? It's or, tiny or, little flakes of it, and then some of it's giant flakes too, so... It's just you never know what you're going to shovel up as you're harvesting. Well, do you ever have to take the mica out? Well, every, every time we harvest a batch of clay, it is in rock form sometimes. And so it's in big chunks of it. So we have to soak it and um, soak it for days Could, at a time. Can you put it on sure. the table right next to those pieces that right you here? have there? Right here? Yeah, you can see, you can see the, mm -hmm. the shine of it. So we have to soak it before we use it and then break it up and then we screen it out through just a really tiny screen, 60 grit screen maybe. Grandma used to use a screen door screen back in the day so uh, there's several ways you can do it you know and if you find a pure vein of it you can sit there and actually make the pots right at the pit site. So. Um, after we've screened it out, it sits there and it dries up a little bit, not much, to where it's this form oh. here and usable. Can you, is there a mica in that clay that there you're is. handling right now? There is, there's tons of it. You can see it all over my hands. You can see it in the clay. This is brand new clay here. We just, we just harvested and uh, screened, so it's very, it's still got a lot of the mold in it. So once this all settles down and relaxes, you'll see it's gonna turn into this kind of color here. More of the mica popping out of it. Right now it's still in this earliest forms where it's, you know, got some mold going on. So the clay that you have in the plastic bag and you're carrying in your hand, mm -hmm. is that the same clay that's gonna dry into that beige color? It is, it is. It's going to dry into that color. And it will dry into that color. Mm -hmm. How interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and how long have you been making micaceous pottery? Since I was about eight years old. Lived with my grandparents since then, since I was about eight, six or seven, eight, somewhere around there. And so they had a curio shop at the Taos Pueblo. They did many types of artwork, uh, drums, moccasins, grandma was the potter and she was the one who taught me how to hunt for the clay. Um, it was an all day thing where we prepared lunch and just went out and harvested. 
And by harvesting, you mean digging it out digging of the ground? Digging it out of the ground. Sounds yeah. like it's hard work. Yeah, it is very hard work, very, very active. But yes. you have this, this lump of clay in, the, in this plastic container. Mm -hmm. um, what does the clay look like when it's in the ground? Because it doesn't look exactly like that, does it? Actually, no. It's several different colors. If you look at one of the pots that's fired, for example... For example, this one here, you will see a lot of those colors in the pit. So it's, you'll see purples, you'll see blues. And that picture, especially in the corner there, of that pot over there, you'll see all those different colors in the bed in the mountainside. Um, I mean, array of colors, whites, blacks, and it's all mixed together. And so you dig it out of the ground. Mm -hmm. Do you, you have to take out any impurities? Well, when you're soaking, yeah. When, after you bring it home, we dig it out first, and then we bring it home and soak it in some buckets where we have to mix it after it sets for a while to break it up. And then we take out the big rocks. You'll see big, giant rocks. You'll see um, flakes of the big mica, which is too big to add to it. And so we run it through a screen. And what about yeah. weeds and roots? Oh, and, yes. That's, mm -hmm. that's a welcomed part of it. Yeah. Yes, and all the little bugs that have been crashed up for millions of years. And oh. they all wake up and say, what's going on here? Oh, my gosh, yes. <laughs> but what happens if you don't clean it well? I mean, if you don't clean it well, then you're going to get pits in the pots when you're firing them. And you'll get cracks. And it just won't be like a nice clean fire afterwards after you're... What, what takes longer, cleaning the clay or making a pot? That's a good question. I'm not sure. The whole process is 70% of it is prep work, I would say, from going to dig the pit, from, from going to locate the pit, because you can't just, oh, there's red clay, uh, red dirt, grab it. You know, you can't do that. So it's a learned thing, and it took me training, years of training, for me to get the good stuff. And one, one thing you mentioned a little while ago was that you, uh, you lived with your grandma. Mm -hmm. Who taught you how to make pots? It was her. Yeah, she it was, was grandma the one. It was grandma. And actually, when, when my mom was waiting for me to be born, I think is where it started. Because um, she went home to her parents and was bored out of her skull waiting for me to be born. And they told her, here. Here's some clay, do something. You're just, you know, getting too bored. So she started making little stuff and licking it as she went along because that's how we do it. We, you know, lick it to get wet. And that's where I got my first taste of it. And I, it in was, you, it was, I was addicted. In, before you <laughs> yes, were born, yeah. right? Uh, there yeah. must be a gene some, there somewhere in so, there, I think. Uh -huh. And same with Sunny Boy. I'm pretty sure that's where it all began. Yep. So. Being raised with them and being around it all day, every day, was something I was raised with. The smell of it, and just the, when it's when it's first soaking, it's a horrible smell. It smells like you know, rotting because of mold. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times I thought Grandma wasn't you know, why does she smell like that? I was embarrassed to go to town with her and be with her. I'm so ashamed now. <laughs> <laughs> then I realized, when she finally said, it's your turn to get in the clay and mix it, then I finally realized, oh, oh, it's the clay. It's the clay. Well, how, how old were you when you made your very first pot? Oh, my gosh. I would say maybe five, five years old, four, maybe earliest four years old, probably. Did Just the little pinch pots. Did the pots survive the firing? They did. And where, and where are those little pots now? Oh, my gosh. In collections, probably, you know? Y you sold them? I sold them, yes. They all sold. And, and may I ask what, what you charge for those? Oh, my gosh. Pots? 25 cents. Uh -huh. 50 cents. <laughs> whatever, whatever was enough to buy a candy bar back in those days. You know, yeah. shoot. I well, was a little hustler in the Pueblo. So, you know. And Grandma just said, keep making, always have inventory. This will, this is what's going to take care of you and your family. This is it. Mother Earth. And it sure has, still is. 
So it doesn't need much water. You can just really, it's so pliable. It's like gum. You can just pull it and still see the mica all throughout it. And the mica gets pretty sharp because it's glass. So it breaks into your skin sometimes. Well, how many pots have you made since that five-year-old first began? I do not know. That's a good question. That's hard to say. Thousands? Thousands. 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 Yeah. Thousands. And I've lost hundreds, too. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not an exact size. You have to really know what you're doing, you know? So we've lost some. The creator just needs them in the... Spirit world is what I think, you know, so he takes them, his creator takes them, and we boss them. Well, um, have, I understand that uh, not so long ago you won a very big award. Yes. Oh, tell us oh all gosh. about it. Very prestigious for me and very important because it was with, for this New Mexico State uh, Governor's Award in Excellence in Arts. I was among a group, small group of people who, who were selected and won the award. And it was just such an honor, really, to be recognized in your own state and in your own small community here for all the hard work that, that, that's been done. We've been using this clay since at least the 1100s, so it's an old... These are Since ancient. the year 1100? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They found shards dating back to those that date. Uh, uh, some scientists came and dug out our trash pits at the Taos Pueblo and dated the shards back to then. And we initially used them for cookware. They all hold water. Some of these, can, you can probably use one of those as a, for um, a walk. I've done walks for some customers bean pots, Eric's cups are usable, um, they all hold water. And I have heard over the years that the best tasting beans oh in the yes. entire world yes. come from a micaceous cooking pot. That's right. Well, wow. That's right. Now, you are passing this uh, on to your uh, family, mm -hmm. to, especially to your son, mm -hmm. Eric, who is with us today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we, I, can we see Eric? I'd like to introduce Eric Hello. to everyone. Hello. Um, <clears throat> Eric is, is he your only child? He's not my only child. He's my son. He's my only son. I have a grandson also who's also starting to pick it up. Uh, my daughter is his big sister. So he's the one that's really carrying it on. Mm -mm. Well, yeah. Derek could, I mean, Derek, <laughs> my son is Derek. <laughs> Your son is Eric. Mine is Eric. You're <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Eric, yeah. can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah, for, I'm, from, I'm from Taos Pueblo. I'm, I've been, for the longest time, I've been making the clay. That was my part. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, just making it and stomping it and processing it and sifting it and you know, you know, every now and then I do some coils for her, or sanding, I'd sand some of her pots for her, but then I um, kind of graduated in doing my own stuff. I started with pipes, and then I kind of progressed into cups, and then eventually just led into um, some more pieces like that. So, yeah. Well, the pieces that you see on the middle mm -hmm. screen, uh, that black piece mm -hmm. is one of Eric's. So yeah, just paying so, attention to her. And, so let me guess who yeah. taught you how to make these. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. <laughs> and, and how long have you been um, actually making pots and not being stuck doing all the hard work yeah. of digging clay? I was in and out of it. I made a couple pots maybe like five, seven years ago. Started so then, yeah, I, had, I knew I had it in me, so it's been on and off. But. Just barely, just barely recently, just maybe uh, last year or something, I started doing them. So, Eric, how old are you? Um, thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And Probably is enough. is this turning out to be a career for you? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> seems to I'm be a passion. Now, you know, it's what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. It seems to be going. Yeah. 
know, just, just surprised how they came out. So just um, gonna see how far, see, gonna see how far it goes, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looking good so so far. Yeah. yeah. Passion um, turns into a career. Well, you you mentioned that they were utilitarian. Mm -hmm. Do you use any of these pots you make oh. at home? Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. I can use the cups. And, yeah. <laughs> I had two cups that I was using daily that he made and uh, we went and visited some people and he took the cups with him to just show as an example and they ended up buying them so now I have no cups to use. Yeah, that inspired me, motivate me to make some more cups. So, well so sure you have more cups to use, there's a pile of yeah. them right here in that oh, plastic yeah. bag. Uh, I've been slacking so I should make more of those. Yeah. So. We work about a good 12-hour days every single day, really. Up at 8, quit at 8, so that's what we do. Yeah, but I like to make functional pieces like cups and pipes and earrings and necklaces. Mm -hmm. just to, something you can use in your everyday life and get it back to what we used to use it before, mm -hmm. how we used to use it before. I'm well, wearing one of his pieces here. This is Eric's piece. Of oh yeah, also yeah. So I have to do a number of things: cups, yeah. jewelry. You made pipes. you made the necklace mm -hmm. yeah. and the earrings That's and the earrings too. Yeah. Oh, how nice! Yeah. yeah well, so now you need one. Andrea. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you drop that necklace, will it break? I have dropped my. He he made me two of them. I've dropped one before, but no, it's nice and solid. I really didn't do nothing. I was surprised. Yeah, really yeah I'm really like surprised. Like any piece of fine artwork, you're not going to be throwing your jewelry around or your pots around. You know, you have to be careful, of course, with any kind of fine piece of artwork. It's so tell us what you're doing with your hands right now. Right now, I'm starting. This is how I start them. So any, any size I want, like if I want it this size, that's good. that could be a giant bowl. Or even this one could be a small base, a giant one, or a small, just a small little piece here too. So, that's so just where they go. Yeah. Really. What, oh, you mean that that clay mm -hmm. is going to tell you what it wants to Pretty be? Pretty much, unless it's an order, and I have to stick to that particular style, then I, I'm stuck to that. But it can go anywhere, really. Micaceous clay. And you can see the glitter in there that's already in the clay when we go harvest. So it's really, really rich with that. No, no, it's too, too difficult to, to, oh my gosh, it's a lot of work to, to go harvest it and then to make it. Yeah, it's, we've been asked to teach. We, we rarely, this is like our only second demo we've ever done. Yeah. Our, well, you so know, we're very honored to be here at Andrea. So pottery making is very much a part of your cultural mm -hmm. history and your cultural religion. That's right. And that tends to stay within your tribe, within Pretty Taos much. Pueblo. Now, yeah. are there other Pueblos that make micaceous pottery? There are. There are other tribes. You know, there's a Hickoria. Who we trade it with back in the day. We had a long-standing relationship with the Hickoria people. Uh, there's the Hickoria Apache people. The Hickoria people. Apache mm -hmm. Dulce people, definitely. Nam Bay uses a, you know, different, a few other people. Now, all of your pieces start that way, and it looks like everything is done by feel. Yeah, everything is done by feel. I could, I could sit here blindfolded and make whatever, whatever you wanted me to, really. That's how many years I've been doing it. So. Well, I know for people who are watching, if mm -hmm. you look at the piece on the table that's drying, mm -hmm. notice how thin mm -hmm. those walls are. And how much mica it has in it. And how much mica it has in it. But how, how uh, Angie is able to make her pieces so thin is really something that's quite wonderful. Um, and I, you know, there was no way that you can visually uh, have the understanding of how thin these pieces really are. Mm -hmm. And last night I was lying in bed trying to figure out how in the world I was going to convey what <laughs> Angie's 
thin pieces look like. <laughs> and what I did is I pulled out my kitchen scale. <laughs> and the first thing I did is I took a uh, oh. can of soda. Now the can of soda says on the outside it has 12 fluid ounces in it. And oh. if you weigh that pot, um, that pot weighs just slightly more than that, a little bit less mm -hmm. than a pound. And then I came into the gallery today and I looked at pieces that were about the size, Derek, this one, that I looked and looked at pieces that were about the size and sort of the volume of a piece of pottery here. And so we could get some sort of comparison. 34 ounces. 34 ounces for that piece. The, the first one, the can weighs what, 13 and a half ounces? That piece weighs 30. 13? 30, oh, 30, 30, 30. 34 ounces. Now, here's one of Angie's pots that I weighed this morning. And its weight is? 26 ounces. 26 ounces. <laughs> uh, so that will give you an idea <laughs> of how little and how thin these pieces are. Angie and I always have conversations when she comes in because every time I question her about whether those pieces are made out of clay or whether she made them out of styrofoam. <laughs> but it they are truly unbelievable for um, the, the size they are and how uh, thin they are. And it's really funny because I've given people pieces of your pottery to, to hold. Mm -hmm. And it's almost as though their arms fly up yes. oh because my they can't believe how light and how thin they are. Uh, and it, do you have... Any something special that you do that makes them so thin? Oh boy, just just challenging myself and just the love of maybe just showing off a little bit, you know, and saying because it took me so long to get into shows. They were real picky about the heaviness. They didn't galleries didn't like the bulkiness and the you know, and it just bugged me. So I'm like, well, I'll show you. I'll show you what the heck my cases can do, you know. So that's what inspired me to really go take it one step further as fine artware. So people say, oh, it's going to break. Well, any kind of fine artware you have to be careful with, right? It's got the endurance of like corningware or china, I guess. You just have to feel out whichever one. And I don't know. Well, I think that, you know, there was a time when my caches pottery was used strictly for mm -hmm. utilitarian purposes, right. like all of the pottery. That's right. And then, you know, some white guy showed up mm -hmm. and said, oh boy, these are really pieces mm -hmm. of art. And um, they started collecting them and displaying them, yeah. and there were shows and museum exhibits mm -hmm. and, and all those kinds of things. And, and my caches pottery was sort of the stepchild of uh, the mm -hmm. media, and so uh, the medium, mm -hmm. excuse me, mm -hmm. and uh, and not until rather recently has it become equal, if not mm -hmm. more, or in fact better in some <laughs> ways than the pieces that are so decorative, because the the my, the plain micaceous pieces really blend in well with a contemporary architectural and interior furnishings. Oh. And uh, they, I mean, in their simplicity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one now can dwell on the surface and yeah. on the shape. Yeah. And the decoration is not something that distracts from those two important parts. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that because it is finally being accepted as an art form to where, you know, it's collected widely now and I'm excited to be here because I think you guys are the only ones that so show 
such a wide range of our work, especially now with Eric coming in. And um, I'm excited about that. Well, you won this wonderful award from the, the governor of the mm -hmm. state of New Mexico for your contribution to the mm -hmm. arts of the state of New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Have you won any other awards? Oh boy, yes, a lot. <laughs> I've been blessed with a few, more than a few. Um, the one I was most excited was, was the uh, 2017 Best in Division uh, uh, Award at the Indian Market, Santa Fe Indian Market, because I, I was in shock. I was in shock holding that piece at the award after accepting my award and all, amongst all these potters from all over the United States, I guess, right? And I'm standing here, little old me, with my little old micaceous pot, picking, winning. <laughs> it was very exciting. Well, Indian Market, for those of you who don't know about it, um, happens the third weekend in August in mm -hmm. Santa Fe, and this year it will be the 102nd, mm. I believe, um, year for mm -hmm. Indian Market. It attracts Native American artists from the entire country, and they give out uh, lots of awards, lots mm -hmm. of ribbons uh, in various categories. And then depending on whether it's pottery or jewelry or textiles mm -hmm. uh, or the various other categories, they choose one that is the best of that division. Mm -hmm. And then of those divisions, they choose one that is what they consider to be the very best in the entire show. Now, we're not talking about a few little pieces here. There are about right. 1,500 to oh 2,000 artists. Yes. And it, it is an unusual for an artist to enter more than one piece, mm -hmm. but not all artists um, enter. But for Angie to win a, a prize of the best of division mm -hmm. is a really wonderful, wonderful uh, honor. How long have you been exhibiting in Indian Market? Wow. Not Since the 101 years. Not the 101 mm -hmm. years. Maybe, I think the first time I showed there, I think was 2005 maybe. I don't remember for sure. Somewhere around there. Mm, it's hard to say. No. You've only made a little bit, and the part mm -hmm. you pinched with your fingers. Uh, what happens from here to, oh my gosh. to make I, one of these enormous pots? Well, they have to set before I can add on another coil. So I've got some outside setting, but mm -hmm. hopefully they're set. I doubt they're ready yet. And then I cut this evenly, and then just start adding coil, and then let that set. And then, so I'm working on anywhere from three to 15 at once, and just rotating them. Oh, so, yeah. you, so you don't go out uh, with uh, Eric, your son, and a no. shovel, and dig enough clay for one piece of pottery, then come home and clean the clay for one piece of pottery, no. and then make coil one piece of pottery, and no then way. fire one piece of pottery. How no. many do you have going at the same time? Like I said, anywhere from 5 to 15. Now that he's joining in, we've got like, oh my God, our house is full of pottery. In, in various stages? In various stages, yes. Oh. Yep. And what, when, when you dig the clay, do you dig enough clay to have a house full of pottery? Yes, yes. We dig enough clay to last us through the winter months. And that's all, just enough for that. Otherwise, we'd have clay all over, all too, too much clay. So we only take what we need for that year and use it pretty much all. Yeah, does the clay have to age? Yes. What, what oh, it doesn't have to necessarily, but it's better that it, if it does. Why is mm -hmm. it better? It just turns more pliable, pretty much, and it bonds together, and the oils start making something magic. So, something that's scientific. Something magic. Something happens. scientific, yeah. Like All the little beings that were crashed out in them for millions of years start waking up and want to be a part of the magic. And so that's what's beautiful. It's, it's 
it all being happens. Being a winemaker. Yeah, uh -huh. totally. The clay gets better. Yeah. Patience. It teaches you tons of patience, you know, mm -hmm. and we love that. It's, it's so, I mean, we can just dwell into this world and stay there. Shoot, yeah. So this is your meditation? This is our, this is our world. This is our world. Yeah. Now, do you think, well, for those of you out there, before we uh, turned on all the microphones and cameras, mm -hmm. Angie made a few pieces that were mm -hmm. about this size, and we put them outside mm -hmm. in the sunshine mm -hmm. to see if they would dry a little bit, and maybe we can bring one ready. of those in for you yeah. and see if it's ready bring, to rock and roll. Yeah, let's see. Let's bring the big one. Yeah, bring them all in. Whichever one is the driest. Here, take this one out and switch out. You notice Angie has a piece of newspaper underneath yeah, Because I don't want to total your table. Oh, oh, I thought it was for some no, special purpose. Not does at it, all. Does it absorb any of the moisture from the clay? No, it just helps me from not totaling your table. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that does. Now, what kind of surface do you work on at See, home? as as you start building it, you can start moving it on its own. And so I pick it up. I'll be picking those up, and I'll be pulling them from the outside like this. See? And just shaping them like that. And setting them down. See how those are doing. Is it dryer? It's dry mm. enough. They're dry enough for a coil, most definitely. Oh, yeah. So are you ready for coils? Oh, we are ready for Yay. coils. Bring Let's them on. Let's do this, then. OK, so this one could be giant pot or small one, whatever. Let's see what it's going to be, huh? So I first well, make it you, nice and even. Do you ask the pot what it wants to be, or does it just tell you? Um, it, we talk. <laughs> We have a conversation, I guess you could say, right? Wow, that dried quickly, huh? So you'll see how small the coils actually are. And of course, you save every little piece because it's such hard work to go run around in the mountains and get them. So we score first so it can bond. A little bit. some different ones of the ones she's made. So you're making breadsticks? Breadsticks, cigars, whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. Spaghetti. Uh-huh. Looks getting thinner. And I like to try and do one whole quail in one shot, not add little pieces to it because that just becomes a pain in the butt. See, and it's still, it's still, it's still pliable where you can pick it up. It's still pliable where you can pick it up. And it's so even. Yeah. And then it's put on here like this. Okay. Okay. I like to wet it here so it won't get dry. But it didn't reach. It will. It will? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, I can't call myself Angie Yazi. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just pinching it on to the other pot. And look how nice and silky smooth it just mm -hmm. glides on. And you can almost see where this pot wants to go, really. Just depending on how big you want to get it, or...
Okay. Hello. And it's gone. It's gone. It's a totally different human being already. <laughs> so on the outside, on the outside, what you want to do is bond these now. And I can pick them up because they're so thin and they're not going to break because of the quality of the clay. And, and again, Grandma's the one who taught me how to pick out the clay, have patience, don't just grab whatever the heck's on the side of the road. And then that's pinched on there. Did your mom make pots too? She did. Yep. Yep. In well, fact, I, I meant to bring some of hers, but I did not. Her favorite was wedding vases. She liked making wedding vases. Those are quite difficult. Those wedding vases can be very difficult to do. That's why I was so in awe of Eric's newest wedding vase. So after I'm done with this part of it, I will have to let it set again and get this harder where I can be able to pick it up and handle it. Could you put See? some wedding vases on for us? I'd like to have you see some mm -hmm. of uh, Angie's wedding vases. So there is one over in the right-hand corner, the black one with the twisted handle, and one in the left-hand corner. And uh, if you notice, they have two spouts. Wedding vases are traditionally mm -hmm. used in a marriage ceremony. Water is put inside and the bride drinks from one side and the groom from the other. And the whole idea is to, is one. Now mm -hmm. Angie, I noticed that uh, those two pieces, in fact, those four pieces that you see in the frame, two of them are that nice caramel color right. and the other two are black. Mm -hmm. What? The firing. Is that the same clay? It's all the same clay. And what what creates those two different colors? It's the firing. The black ones are where we're totally cutting out all the oxygen as the fire's blazing on the pot. Uh, we don't use any more any manure like the Santa Clara people. We just use we're using wood only. So as the fire is blazing, we grab our trash can and hope we don't get blown out to kingdom come and put the trash can right on there and cut out all the oxygen so that you can see the, the soot just stays onto the black piece and turns it black, you know, and just crawls all over the pot. So, uh, and then the other red one, you're just leaving open and letting it breathe and especially the ones with the fire clouds, that one's just breathing. Well. Um, you said that the soot falls off on it and mm -hmm. it turns the pot black. Mm -hmm. But if you break one of these pieces, it's black through and through. It's black through and through. And, and so yeah. the, the, the soot is not exactly what uh, makes the piece. No. No. It's just the fire reduction, I guess, it's and the, the magic that goes on. the reduction of oxygen. Yep. And I noticed that um, on the smaller wedding vase, that well, there are some real dark mm -hmm. areas. What causes that? Those are what we call fire clouds. And that's just where you see the flames dancing onto the, on the pot. As a fire, because we, what we do is we put, we build a, fire, a bed of coals first and then put the pot right on the coals and then put wood on right on the pot. Hi, Antonia, good to see you. Yeah, and we put the wood right on the pot, so the wood will just burn onto the pot. Mm -hmm. And as it falls off, you see the little flames dancing and leaving those black spots. So you Mother know? Nature so, gets yes, to uh, take part. It's exciting. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. Well, we just had another potter walk in the yes, door. Yes, my friend. Uh -huh. And friend Frederica Antonio yes. is here from uh, Acoma Pueblo, and she's done many a demonstration here. Uh, Frederica, why don't you grab one of your pots that's mm -hmm. on the counter over there and come over here by Angie, and, and uh, you guys can chat a little. She's the one that does Yeah, you guys can show off one each one. other's and stuff. Oh, really? the black cup I have. Nice. Oh, cool. I have one of her black cups that she's... Yeah. Yeah. 
So this needs well, to go outside again. She's oh that now. What are you gonna do with that? It needs to go outside and set a little bit more so I can be able to handle it uh -huh. and do the work on the outside part of it. See how it's already getting big? Oh yeah. So that's gonna be pulled some more thinner than it is. So right now it's too darn thick to do anything with. So yeah. And then this one too, the same thing. Same process, yeah. I need to put a coil on here first before I can take it out. But. So that's why you have a lot of pieces going at the mm -hmm. same time because if, if you put, if the clay's too wet, yep. what happens? It, what, it just, it'll, it'll just collapse and it'll be too thick. It just won't, you know. Hi, my friend. Oh my gosh, how are so you? So good to see you. Feels good. Hey, how are you? Well. I see your work all the time, oh, and I, I think know. about you a lot. I know, we always think about you, too. And yes. To go visit you. Yes, you should. Get my, I'll give you my yeah. phone number so you can come up and come to my house okay. and feast with us or whatever. Oh, huh? feast? Um, yeah. It's not until September 30th. Mm. But, um, ours is on um, September 2nd. Mm, okay, earlier than ours. Yeah. What my son's here. Look at his here wedding vase. Is Frederica Eric's new wedding vase. Antonio base. from mm -hmm. Alcamo Pueblo. And Angie from Taos Pueblo, and <laughs> that they are sort of Sisters directly of opposite. They are re directly opposite in the pieces that they make. I mean, they're they're the, the pendulum swimming, uh, swinging on both sides, because Angie's pieces are undecorated and Frederica is the master decorator of uh, American Indian pottery with all her really, really, really uh, fine donations. And if you guys have any questions for each other, that would be just great. We just, we caught up real quickly and we asked, of course, when's your feast day? <laughs> Does Come on it, up to my yeah. feast day. Yeah. Yeah. Yours. <laughs> Does that mean you get a free meal? Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and free bread when you're leaving and <laughs> free everything. Free everything. Mm -hmm. Well, the throw. Mm -hmm. No, it's no, no, no. This is like a. Um, or they have vendors all around. Oh, okay. Okay. They go to the saint and stuff. Yeah. Well, when's your feast day, Angie? Uh, September 30th. Uh, May 3rd is the first one. That's the foot races. And that's when the young guys do the races. That's the younger crowd. And, and then, then the corn dance, just to honor the, the harvesting and that kind of thing, you know, the changing of the seasons. Yep. And when is that? May 3rd. May 3rd? May 3rd. And are there any in the summer? There are, after May 3rd is uh, East Day, oh, it's September, May, June, July, August. August is our pilgrimage, Blue Lake, that's our Blue Lake time, so that's a private one. Really. And when is your feast day? September 2nd. September 2nd. She's so, to I'm trying to get a free, I'm trying to get a free meal out of this. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Hi, sweetie. Oh, it looks like it's old home week here. Uh -huh. And guess what? We have another potter. But not a Native American potter. Oh, this is my sisters in clay. Yeah, oh sisters and sisters. This is her step. This is, her, this is um, historic. You must get a picture of all of us. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so happy to see you guys. It's so nice. Look at Eric's new wedding face. Yeah, it's yes. fabulous. Oh, see. Oh. You see the thing. Yeah. I love how you both encourage and are always there for each other. Oh, my gosh. It's really yeah. so nice wedding. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Are you happy, Messing? <laughs> are you happy? Am she I, finally got us here after yeah, seven years. Yeah, after, after all those years, we got her here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been a long time, a long right? Time. Uh huh, a long time. We finally said we better get here and do this, and we picked we picked the right time just before uh, 
Just before the sun covers up the, right? The eclipse? <laughs> That's the guys have done, some, right? Yeah. 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 May I stick my finger in there? Yes, grab some. Grab some. This is the most alive clay ever. Yeah, and I don't know hot. if Miss Angie has described this, but she can drive for miles and miles and miles, and all of a sudden she'll see a tree with a big branch, mm -hmm. and she'll say, that's exactly where we should dig. Yeah. And I don't think you've ever been wrong, have you? No, not, <laughs> not, not really. I've oh hiked those gosh. mountains so many years, so I know where everything is, really. Your clay feels the best in the beautiful? world. Yes. This is the newest, and Eric's been working on this, like, mad. Really? He's doing all the clay now, where I just sit and produce, so. Fantastic. Yes. So where do you, um, Heidi, do you want to tell the world? Who you, uh, who you are, and because oh. yeah, we are live. Oh, are you? Uh -huh. <laughs> Didn't know. I'm Heidi Lowen, and I have a gallery just a few blocks up from Andrea Fisher and from where Miss Angie is making a new masterpiece. Mm -hmm. And I'm so, so lucky to call Angie a very, very dear friend. We both. Well, tell the gravitate. world. Yeah, we'll tell the world what kind of material you show oh. and what you do. Okay, well this is her thing. I work typically in porcelain and most of my work is done on the wheel because I have zero patience <laughs> to do what Angie's doing. But her hands just work so rhythmically, so fluidly, and the clay speaks to her. And I have learned so many ways of appreciating clay and appreciating what can be done and sharing it with other people from Miss Angie and her fabulous Aww, son Eric. I you. am blessed. Blessed, blessed, blessed. Thank you. Yeah, this clay. Oh my I can't yeah my clay doesn't feel this great. It feels good. Yeah. And it smells differently, but this this All is little, mad. But you don't beans. dig your own clay, do you? No, you go to the craft store and buy a 25 pound bag. Mm -hmm. I buy a 10,000 pounds at a time. <laughs> 25 in my ass. But this clay with the mica is just, it has a spirit all of its own. Right? All those little beans that we dug up that have been hibernating for millions of years are now waking up. And they're like, right, yes, right, yes, right. Well, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Frederica Antonio, who's from Acapulco Pueblo. And yes, Frederica's pot, piece of pottery is behind her, right here on the counter. This is you. Yes. She's insane. The black and white. Uh -huh. Well, back to you, Angie. Uh, uh, not with me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry, sorry, Angie. Well, Angie, you're going to now do another... Uh, I'm doing a different uh, uh, shape. Just to show off and show, <laughs> see what I can, if I'm in the mood for, for this particular... Frederica, could you bring me that rectangular one that's right over here? Okay, so I'm going to come back and hopefully you'll still be here. And if you okay. want we go behind her and put it over here on the table. Beautiful. I love you. Frederica's just bringing over Ooh, yeah. the fi a finished product of one of um, Angie's pieces that looks like it probably started out well, the, with what she's doing right there in front of her. Angie, can you, can you grab that piece and show the world? Put it in front of you. Um, I have to really wash my hands. Oh, okay. Well, here we go. Okay, that's good. That's, good. that's good. That's good. There we go. Now you can see so what that that <laughs> the begin <laughs> the beginning and the end. The embryo and the and the child. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, good. That's it's really fun to uh, watch you do that. Well, so, 
here we have, we've been here for 45 minutes now, and what we've seen you do is add a few coils, mm -hmm. and it will give people an idea of how long it takes to make yeah. a finished product, and the time that you have to uh, uh, take to let it dry in between, so something that uh, may start off today may not be finished until June. It, I mean, that could happen because not only is there the time digging of the clay, but you have to have the materials, the wood. You have to go get all that wood to fire it as well. Um, you said earlier how many you've made and how many you've lost. Uh, what, what can go wrong? The weather can go wrong. You hurry and being impatient can go wrong. If you don't let them dry enough, that's a bad thing. If you're hurrying and even the way you feel, if you're not in a good spot, you know, the pot knows it almost. So that whole, that whole thing. If it's rainy, if your pit's not dry, oh, all this past well, I mean, people come here and they look at finished products, and they're used to going to a department store or a big box store and looking at dishes, and, not, and they have no idea that um, the what they're seeing here takes a hundred times longer to make than those dishes that come out of a machine. The wet clay comes out of a machine, it goes into a mold, it goes into a drying thing, it goes into a place that's glazed, it goes into an electric kiln, and a, you know, the next day you have a finished product. But here it is truly a long, long labor of love. Now, you know, I, I talked to lots of potters about the connection to their own personal and their cultural religion. Um, are you connected in some way to making pottery through your culture or your religion? Um, I think most of it is just, of course, naturally everybody must respect Mother Earth because we get everything from her. Everything, no matter what we're, what kind of business we're in, it all comes from Mother Earth. And so for me, personally, I do my best to, to respect her, first of all, and then teach my children the same thing. And it's, you know, um, it's like your parents. grandma taught you? My grandmother you? taught me, taught me how to take care of us. And, um, we are so grateful all the time. And we share what we make. We, if we sell a pot, we come free sell a pot, we, we go home and we help someone else out. You know, it's not all goes to our pockets all the time. If someone's needing something, or we see someone on the side of the road that needs money or whatever, and we'll give them something too. It's not just for us, it's for everybody. And that's what we love about it. Even dogs get something. Even dogs get something. Yes, he gets his he gets his treats and he gets he just got a new bed. So <laughs> and this is your dog. Our dog oh, Walter. Your dog Walter. Walter's your dog. Our he's our confidant. He's our counselor. Our <laughs> our spiritual advisor. <laughs> Your biggest fan? Yes, our biggest fan. <laughs> Their security. Their security, yeah. So every little being, every little being that crawls the earth is respected and acknowledged because it's in there. It's in there. It's in there and it comes out like this. So we just hope people find what they love and enjoy and just treasure it like eye candy, you know? And the, the pieces that they take home with them give them happiness and, and joy and that's what we hope. 
I said, we hope. Wow, yes. Simple as that. <laughs> it sounds so simple. It sounds and so if simple. If we could only is. simple make things as simple yeah. as possible. Wouldn't it be and, nice? Yes. And lastly, is mm -hmm. there anything special you would like the world to know about you? Uh, let's see. Oh, gosh. I've gone through a lot, you know, just a lot of trials, and I've come out. I love evolving, and I think this clay and the art form, and just being an artist helps me do that, just to evolve. And I know you guys have seen me grown through the years, up and down, come through your doors, you know, where we've in different stages or whatever, and now my son's walking into this whole thing. So I, I enjoy that most of all, being able to evolve, being able to reinvent oneself is just the most amazing thing. And wow. the play's always there. I mean, for anything. So that's what I enjoy most. Well, thank you, You're Ms. welcome. Angie, I can't Bless believe you. an entire hour yes. has gone by. I know. Huh? And it was such a pleasure to have you Aww. and your son Eric here. And we wish you all the best and a long, 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 long life so that you can continue yes. to make all of these beautiful things. From that lifeless lump of clay mm -hmm. comes some of the most beautiful pieces that we have here in the oh, gallery. Thank you. you. Thank you guys for having us. We, we have honored and treasured our relationship with you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. We really, really, really appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. we're done. Thank you. Thanks. Nice.